Hi. Hello. It's Maya. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like my last five videos have been so fucking weird and like I've been trying to like act like myself but also do it in a way where I'm being more quiet and subdued because my last five videos that I've posted have all been filmed while my parents were home or while somebody else was in the house and you guys all know that I hate doing that. So like, yeah, you might like notice a little change and that is simply the fact that no one's home. So I'm comfortable and I feel like I can be more myself and actually talk without worrying about somebody hearing me. Why I'm so worried about that, I don't know. Shout out to anxiety. So what I wanna say, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. I hope everybody is staying safe. Hope you're being smart. Wash your hands, cough into your fucking elbow, use hand sanitizer, um, stay the fuck away from people, okay? Don't be stupid. And yeah, let's get into this video. Now, you guys have requested this. I mostly just get people wanting me to, like, talk about the music that I listen to or talk about my CDs in general. So we're gonna do that, and I don't really know how else to do this other than just going through them. Now, as you can see... There's a lot. I'm probably going to split this video into two different parts, so this is probably going to be part one. I'm gonna go through like the first three rows right here. Actually, I'll do A through M, and then next time I will do N through Z slash numbers. I know I've talked about my CDs before, Four because I had like a little video that I did with that was like a music Q&A type thing But I will go over it again briefly. I am 23. I have been collecting CDs since I have been 12 This does not represent all the music that I listen to if you would like to know all the music that I listen to I have a link in my Spotify a link in my description of my Spotify. It's always there. So if you guys are ever curious, you can go follow me on there I have a bunch of different playlists. I still listen to all this stuff like Duh, but I also, you know, I just, I throw in different things now. I don't slowly listen to like mid 2000s emo pop punk. I have expanded my music vocabulary, I shall say. That being said though, yeah, a lot of the stuff is very emo. I don't have to justify anything to you, okay? I just, I listen to what I listen to. I'm not a, like embarrassed or ashamed of what I listen to. Probably about half of them are from half price books because they're cheap. Depending on what the CD is or if it's on sale, you can get them for like Anywhere from like two to like, I think the most I've ever paid for a CD at half price books was like 12 bucks, okay? And that was if it was like new or rare or a special edition type thing. Anything else, I pretty much either got at like a show as like a Christmas or a birthday gift or just from like random stores. So like Target, Walmart, thrift stores, Goodwill. What's the other one? Best Buy. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna shut up. We're gonna get into this. We're gonna do A through M and talk about some emo shit. So we're gonna start, obviously, like I said, with the A's and we shall start with all time low. All right. So we have Put Up or Shut Up, So I'm Wrong, It's Right, Nothing Personal, Straight to DVD, Dirty Work. I just got reminded I've also gotten a few from Amazon. Just throwing that out there. Okay, anyways, Don't Panic, and then Future Hearts. Now, out of all of these CDs, which one is my favorite? That's a no-brainer. So Wrong, It's Right. Best song to ever exist. Uh, Let It Roll, bitch. I'll fucking bop. Poppin' Champagne, Excuse Me. And then also, um, Coffee Shop Soundtrack. I feel like I'm naming all the, like, the singles, but honestly, I don't fucking care because there's a reason that they're singles. They fucking slap. JC Ray. See, nothing personal. Which one's the best one on here? Walls. I will say, a lot of people tend to say that this is their worst album, or like a few, at least a few years ago before like your newer albums came out, which like they're not bad, but whatever, I'm just saying. People used to say that this was their worst album. Um, excuse the fuck out of you, it's one of their best albums. Listen to the song Guts and go reevaluate your life choices. Thank you. Um, what do I still need? I still need the very first one that I can't think of right now off the top of my head, but I, picture of it here. But that one is very rare and I'm not paying $300 for it or however much people are selling it for. So I still need that one. I still need Don't Panic, It's Longer Now, which I know that that one's also pretty rare because they only did like a limited amount to them. And then I need the two or three albums that came out after Future Hearts. I can't remember exactly how, I think it's only two albums that came out after that. All right, moving along. We have A Day to Remember. We have For Those Who Have Heart, Old Record. I'm trying to like put them on angles so like the fucking thing, the light, the ring light is not getting in the way. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Homesick, which this is very destroyed. What Separates Me From You. Uh, a little extra CD for that. Common Courtesy, and then Bad Vibrations. Which one is my favorite? 
for those who have art. Which one is the best one? Okay, um, yeah, show them the ropes now. I'm gonna be recommending a lot of songs throughout this, okay? Start a fucking list, all right? Show them the ropes, a fucking bop. For Homesick, holding it down for the underground. For What Separates Me From You. Honestly, you be Tales, I'll be Sonic. Common Courtesy, Sometimes You're the Hammer, Sometimes You're the Nail. And then for Bad Vibrations, this one I actually don't listen to that often. I have it because my, um, my, boy my boyfriend got me a bunch of CDs for my birthday and this is one of the ones that he got me. But I think Paranoia, Exposed, and Bullfight are my favorites, I think. Don't hold me on that, but whatever. I'll just say Paranoia. Moving along, I'm gonna grab this little stack right here. Uh, we have Attila, About That Life. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Back in like early Tumblr days, 2012 to like 2015, I was Tumblr famous, whatever. I had like 23,000 followers. I don't fucking know why. So I had like an Amazon wish list that was public and I think I had it on my page or somebody asked me for it. I don't know. All I know is that all of a sudden this CD showed up at my doorstop and I was like, like I kind of just put it on there for like shits and giggles, but I think they saw that it was like the first one on the list because it's A and they bought it for me, which like, thank you. I still own it. I still very much appreciate it, but I really don't listen to Attila. <laughs> but the only songs that I have listened to on here that I actually kind of like is like Middle Fingers Up, About That Life, and Call Out. So yeah, I mean, thank you. So next we have Balance and Composure, Separation, right? Yes. <laughs> Separation, and then the things we think we're missing. Contrary to what I just what just happened, where I completely forgot about the album name. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. The 2013 nostalgia I get from this. Actually, no, like 2012, 2011. Because this was one of like the first like kind of more pop punk emo alternative rather than like mid 2000s pop punk emo. I don't know how to explain it. Whatever. No, I, I transitioned from like mid 2000s emo to like early 2010 pop punk emo. Whatever. I'm gonna, sh I'm just gonna shut up, okay? I get nostalgic. Ninth grade, high school. Um, best song on here. If I remember correctly, Galena. Galena, Galana, whatever the fuck. And this one, I'm honestly not that big of a fan of, but Tiny Raindrop. Next we have Beartooth. We have their EP6, which I mean, Go Be The Voice is a good one on here. Fun fact, actually, I um, saw them when they did their very first tour ever with The Ghost Inside and The Balba and I, cannot remember anybody else that was on there. But anyways, it wasn't like a, I wasn't on like the barricade. There wasn't, there wasn't like a barricade or anything. It was like a stage show, right? So I was like pressed up against the stage, hips fucking knocking into the goddamn like edge of the fucking stage and the wood. And I just remember having bruises on them, on my hip bones. And uh, Caleb, the singer, he is a very large man, not large than fat. He's just, he, he a big boy, okay? He's stocky. And like the entire show, I had his knee in my face and my hands on said sweaty knee, trying to hold him back from kneeing me in the face. So, you know, fun times. Then we have disease. I have two of these, but there's an explanation for that. I bought this one. And then in 2015, I did like a little road trip, warp tour thing on the East Coast. Went to like four shows, good times, okay. They had a meet and greet. I didn't have anything for them to sign. So I just bought another CD for them to sign, so. And then we have disease, which I'm, there's one before this one. Can't remember what it's called, whatever. It's the one with like the wolf thingy on it or whatever. Best song on here. What is the best song on here? Let me see. Oh, enemy, 100% goes into that. And then we have Bless the fall hollow bodies um this is another one that my boyfriend got me i'm really not sure why <laughs> because i don't even think it was on my list or it may have been on my list but he asked me like specific bands that like that he should buy from or whatever because he didn't know because uh there was like hella cds on that list and i'm i know i didn't mention bless the fall but i mean bless his heart he tried, and I'm still very grateful for it. I just really don't listen to this one that much. See you on the outside is good. We have Blink-182. We've got Buddha, Enema of the State, The Mark, Tom, and Travis Show, which is like a live CD type thing. Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, they're self-titled, and then Neighborhoods. So I am missing Cheshire Cat, Dude Ranch, and whatever came, I know that California came after Neighborhoods, but I feel like they like just released another album, but I don't know what it's called or if it's even out yet. I don't check up on that. Anyways. Buddha, Romeo and Rebecca, Enema of the State, Dysentery Gary. Okay, weird fact. I have vivid memories of blasting this in my CD player and playing Super Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. So that just shows how old I am. Take off your pants and jacket. Every time I look for you is the best song on here. Might be the best song ever. Who knows? Uh, Self-titled. I'm going to be cliche and say feeling this because I'm feeling that song. And then Natives is the best song on this one. I hope you guys are liking my uh, music re recommendations and being thankful for them because I don't need to be doing this for you. I'm just fucking around. Okay, next we have one that I'm going to get a lot of judgment for, but I don't care. The Bloodhound Gang, hooray for boobies. 
here's the thing. I need you guys to listen, okay? 14 years old, I'm pretty sure. Yes, second concert, Mindless Self-Indulgence. I went with my friend Sharon and my friend Ashley. My friend Sharon's older sister and her friend took us because they listened to Mindless Self-Indulgence in high school. And her sister's like 10 years older than her or something like that, so whatever. Anyways, makes sense. When we were in the car on the way, her friend was blasting this CD, which I did not know who they were or like what the fuck was going on. All I knew is that it was kind of funny. So I like remembered one specific lyric from The Bad Touch. I looked it up when I got home and yeah, I got this from Amazon for like $3. But like, okay, listen, 3.14, Magnum Cum Nada, Hell Yeah, and Right Turn Clyde. Those are all good, okay? Fucking bops. I don't care what anybody says. You gotta listen to like dumb shit sometimes, right? Who cares? Okay, moving on. Boston Manor. This is one of my favorite CDs of all time. They have another one that came out after this. I can't remember what the fuck it's called, but what I do know is that I'm not as big of a fan of that one as I am of this one. This one, and then Feel Something by Movements, which we'll get to that. But those two albums like shaped 2017 for me. Actually, no, 2018 more like. Anyways, okay, best song, Lead Feet. All right, then we have my Breaking Benjamin CDs. We have Saturate, We Are Not Alone, Phobia, and then Dear Agony. And then there's two albums after that that I still need. Dark Before Dawn, and then I don't know what the one after that is. Songs? I can't see. Polyamorous. But this one, sooner or later. Phobia, had enough. And then for Dear Agony, lights out. Next stack. Oh, let's just do these really quick. All right, now we got Bring Me the Horizon. We have Count Your Blessings. Okay, I was not a fan of Jim in high school. I don't think any fat bitch was, but I definitely was not. And then to top it off, I, I only had friends in my gym class my freshman year of high school. Every other time that I took gym, I didn't have like any friends in my gym class. So I would just listen to music the entire time because I didn't want to talk to anybody and I'm pretty sure nobody wanted to talk to me. For some reason, my none of my teachers cared that I listened to music or that I had headphones in. They always yelled at everybody else. I think it's probably just because I was emo and they thought I was gonna like shoot up the school or something. Who knows? Either way, um, I would angst listen to this CD in gym class. That's all I wanted to say about that. Okay. I used to make out with Medusa. Best song. All right. Then we have Bring Me the Horizon. Duh. Suicide season. <laughs> okay. I gotta be honest. It's very short, but the football season is over. Come on. It's a good song. Then we have, let me take a breath for this. There is a hell. Believe me, I've seen it. There is a heaven. Let's keep it a secret. Okay. I mean, Crucify Me is fucking good, but I'm also gonna go with Don't Go. Then we have an iconic life-changing album. Sempaternal. This changed a nation, an emo nation. Actually, no, more like Scene Kid Nation. And the snakes start to sing. It's one of the slower songs on the album, but so good. And then we have That's the Spirit. The best song on here is Oh No. Another slow song, but there's a reason why it's the best one, okay? Just trust me. The whole album's actually good, but like that one, and I guess if you want um, Happy Song and Throne. And then we have Amo or Amo. I don't know how the fuck to say it. Okay, I'm a keep it real to chief. This whole fucking album is so good. This is my favorite album by them. All these songs are fucking good. There's not a single bad one, and I love all of them equally, so... All right, time for me to make a fool of myself. Chase Atlantic, self-titled phases. Listen to me when I tell you. I have never been so far up a band's ass before, and I don't know why, okay? I've Literally been listening to them since like 2017, three years. And like, they're that perfect mix of like fuckboy SoundCloud emo music mixed with like actually good music. <laughs> so like, I don't know like how the fuck they managed to make fuckboy shit sound so fucking good, but like, I'm here for it, okay? I'm not joking when I tell you like literally every LP, every single they've released, every EP they've released, there's literally like no bad song. I don't know how the fuck they did it, but they did it. What is my favorite on this one? Uh, Swim, Drugs and Money, and Uncomfortable. I know I'm like saying more than one, I don't care. And then this one, Heaven and Back, even though I'm depressed and I don't like darkness. Then we have Carousel Kings. I gotta be honest with you, I've never listened to this. I bought it because a friend at the time was doing a tour with them where he was their photographer and I hung out with him during one of the shows and then he convinced me, he, he didn't convince me, but like we were talking to the band and I was like, I guess I'll buy a CD. <laughs> I'm soft, okay? Then we have Youth by Citizen. I don't know why I don't own own any other albums by them. I'll be honest with you, their EP and this are like my favorites. I wasn't really a fan of Everybody Is Going To Heaven and then the one that came out after that. <laughs> What's the best song in here? Speaking with the ghost. Then we have Cobra Starship, Hot Mess. Fun fact, this was in like the top, not top, this was only the first five CDs I ever bought. Tell me this is not like 2009 in a fucking nutshell. Does this not give you like Kesha, Katy Perry, fucking, oh my God, what's the other one? Like Owl City, Black Eyed Peas, Vibes. Okay, Lady Gaga, I just, okay, I'm sorry. What is the best? song here. Pete Wentz is the only reason we're famous. Then we have Comeback Kid. Wake the Dead. Never listened to this either. You wanna know why I bought it? Because it was at Half Price Books and it was signed. I don't know why I'm like this, okay? Leave me alone. And then we have Counterparts 
what is this called? Oh my god. The difference between hell and home. Look at that. Big brain. I don't really listen to them that much, to be honest. This was like the only CD that I ever got into. Debris is the best one. Ow! Son of a bitch. Okay, let me just grab this little stack right here. So we have Dance Gavin Dance. We have Instant Gratification. And Mothership. There it is. I do not like Dance Gavin Dance with Johnny Craig, not only because he's an abusive piece of shit, but I don't know what it is. Okay, his solo stuff and him in Isles and Glaciers, it's good. Like, talking like, if we're not discussing his problematic ass behavior, you know, he, he, like, he has a good voice. He has that good, like, R&B tinge to it. It's catchy, but I don't know what the fuck it is, but like, him and Dance Gavin Dance is just not good. I'm sorry, okay, sorry, bye. And like, Amorosa too? What? All I'm saying is that I prefer Dance Game and Dance with Tillian a thousand times over. So that being said, I only need the one that came out before this that I'm brain farting on and the one that came out after Mothership. Oh wait, best songs. Okay, um, Instant Gratification, something new. And then from Mothership, Young Robot, Flossy Dicky Bounce, <laughs> and then um, Betrayed by the Game are the best ones. So we have Dashboard, Confessional, A Mark, A Mission, A Brand, A Scar. I got this at fucking like a random ass thrift store in my city. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't listen to this often, but but I'm also gonna be cliche. Hands Down is hands down the best song on the album. Have I seen them live? I've seen them live. Then we have uh, Death Cab for Cutie, Plans. I don't remember where the fuck I got this from. Soul Meets Body and Summer Skin. We have The Devil Wears Prada, Death Throne, Beth, what? Beth, what the fuck? Best one on here is Mammoth. We have The Downtown Fiction, Best I Never Had. I forgot, somebody gifted me this for some reason. I don't know why, but once again, thank you. But yeah, wow, y'all remember this fucking band? Holy. Now, this one is also slightly problematic. Despite the fact that Ronnie Radke is a piece of shit, this is still the only Escape the Fate album that matters. Sorry to Craig Nabbit, I don't like your shit, but this is iconic, historical, everything, okay? Dying is your latest fashion. Best song on here. Honestly, the webs we weave, or when I, when I go out, I wanna go out on a chariot of fire. And then we have Evanescence, The Open Door, which, what is the best song on here? Like, Sweet Sacrifice is good as fuck, so. And then we have this, like, live DVD, CD, documentary, little thingy, anywhere but home. Now we have another fat stack. Disclaimer, even though I don't have to explain anything to you guys, um, Fall Out Boy was one of the very first bands that got me into this shit. And by one of, I mean, they were the very first band. Like, obviously, I listened to, like, I listened to their music growing up, but when I finally realized, like, oh my god, I love emo men that are way too old for me, they were, like, my awakening, right? So anyways, Evening Out With Your Girlfriend, which this is actually kind of rare, I guess. I mean, last I checked, it was rare. The price online, like, fluctuates and varies a lot, so Switchblade, and infidelity. Then we have this, which is My Heart Will Always Be the B side to My Tongue. This is like a little, small little EP. And then there's like a little DVD, like documentary type. Not really like a documentary, more just kind of like them filming while they're on the road and just fucking around. And uh, if you've ever seen the video for Dead on Arrival, which by the way, are these out of order? These are out of order. Okay, we'll talk about this one first. Take This to Your Grave, one of my favorite albums of all time. The Patron Saint of Liars and Fakes, back to this. If you've ever seen the music video for Dead on Arrival, they play a bunch of clips from that little documentary i'll just call it then we have from under the cork tree i slept with someone in fall out boy and all i got was a stupid song written about me this is just a um press release or like a just i don't know like a single release for dance dance then we have infinity on high fame is it fame over infamy or i think it's fame over infamy over fame whatever it's fame Infamy, okay? That's the best one. Except also, there's a bonus CD on here that has like two extra songs and like three live songs. G-I-N-A-S-F-S, -S, that is the best song. Then we just have Live in Phoenix, which is just a little documentary. I think that was like when they did the Honda Civic Tour in like 2007. Then we have this, which is the very first CD I ever bought with my own money. And I distinctly remember um, body slamming my bed and landing on this because it was under the covers and I didn't realize it and cracking the case and having a mini mental breakdown and then super gluing it back together. But okay, best song on this. Oh my God, I forgot that it's backwards. Coffee's for Closers. And then we have their greatest hits album, which, you know, my ass should have known when they fucking released this, that they were gonna be going on hiatus like right afterwards. I don't know why it didn't click for me. I think I was like, I was 13, right? Yeah, I was like 12, 13. So I'm so salty about that. There's a song on here called Alpha Dog. Ooh, my voice is getting so crackly. <laughs> There's a song on here called Alpha Dog. Honestly, in my opinion, it's one of their like best songs of all time. Nobody talks about it. So like, fuck you. Then we have the two songs, or the two songs, two albums that they released when they came off of hiatus. I'm not gonna shit on these because I'm not saying that they're bad albums. I'm just saying they're not their best. But okay, Where Did the Party Go? I think it's probably the best one. Yeah, Where Did the Party Go for that one. And then for American Beauty, American Psycho, I'm not a fan. It's not that. Okay, whatever. Um, Nova Kane is the best one. I'll just shut my mouth. Grab this little stack right here. We have Flyleaf, self-titled. I'm sorry is the best one on here. Also, there is like a little tweet or whatever. 
a Twitter, obviously, today. Somebody quote tweeted the music video for All Around Me and they were like, I remember being so mad when I found out this was about God and I was like, oh my God, relatable. Like, not that like, I'll listen to whatever music. I don't care if it's Christian. I mean, like, she didn't make it obvious at all, I don't think, throughout any of these songs. Like, definitely not to, like a teenager. That, you know, like, they were like a religious Christian band and she was singing about sucking Jesus's dick all the time. But it doesn't take away the fact that it's a good ass album. So there's that. And then there's also Memento Mori. I'm gonna go with Again and the kind. Then we have Forever Came Calling, Contender. They're not really that popular. They kind of fell off. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. If Bukowski could see me now is the best one. Then we have an emo staple. From first to last, Dear Diary. My teen angst has a body count. If that is not the most iconic emo album title you've ever heard, I don't know who you are. But yes, classic Sunny Moore, aka if you're young as shit, Skrillex. What's the best one in here? Featuring some of your favorite words. And then we have Good Charlotte, the, the Young and the Hopeless, I Cannot Talk. I'm gonna say the story of my old man. All right, another fat stack. Green Day was also another band that I was very into. I know that the ones I am missing are 1,039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours. Honestly, anything that was released after 21st Century Breakdown slash their whole like Broadway thing, I wasn't really into. I think it's because they did their whole like Uno Dos Tres release like almost all at the same time and it was like three full length albums and I'm like, I'm overwhelmed, I can't do this. So I just backed off and I haven't scooted back, backed, backed forward again, whatever. Anyways, Kerplunk, who wrote Holden, Cl Holden Caulfield? I don't know. We have Dookie, which Burnout is the best one. Then we have Insomniac, which I have two copies of only because I'm stupid and I didn't realize that I already owned one. So I um ended up buying it again. And I'm just now realizing these are like, they're different colors. If you look at certain things, like the head of the guitar there, that's kind of weird. Babs, Uvula, who is the best song. So we have Warning, I'm gonna say Deadbeat Holiday. We got Nimrod, what is the one? I know what the fuck it is, I can't find it. Scattered. So we have Shenanigans, I feel like this album, this album and Warning, I feel like everybody forgets about. Haha, ha, you're dead. <laughs> that's the best one. Then we have the classic American Idiot. Like I wanna be cliche and say Holiday because Holiday's fucking good, but also like Jesus of Suburbia and Homecoming. Bullet in a Bible, it's a live documentary mini documentary, mostly just a live concert thing. 21st Century Breakdown, East Jesus Nowhere, and Peacemaker. And then I have this, which I don't know why I have it, but it's the Broadway cast thing, which now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting flashbacks to a certain thing that I used to do slash imagine. So that is great. But yeah, I kind of forgot that this existed. We'll just grab this last little stack. We have Badlands by Halsey, which I still need. Hopeless Fountain Kingdom. And then I think she just released one called like Maniac or something. I don't know. I haven't listened to like any of the songs on it. I just haven't been interested. But yeah, Badlands. Oh my god, iconic. Oh, I also need, um, was it Room 39? Room 93? One of those variations. The EP, okay? Anyways, what's the best song in here? I haven't listened to this in so long. Oh, Roman Holiday. Duh. You have Angst by Handguns. This is also very early. 2013, 2014. Tumblr trash. Early retirement. We have Hands Like Houses, Unimagined. I still need, oh my god, what is it called? Ground Dweller. That's the one. That's the best one on here. I haven't listened to this in so long. Holy shit. Is it No Parallels? I'm just gonna say No Parallels. Then we have Hundredth, which I have free, and then Revolt Resist. I have not listened to either of these albums in I don't know how fucking long, probably since they've been released, and that is a long time, and I don't remember what any of these sound like. Oh my god. Okay, if you were on Tumblr, Free Mind, Open Spirit, does anyone remember those fucking edits with that? Or like the fucking Windbreakers? Ice Nine Kills. This is another one that I have not listened to it. Why do I have it? Well, I'll let you know. My very first time going to Warp Tour. You know how like the bands or like a member of the band will like walk around and fucking like harass you to buy a CD or just like try to convince you to buy a CD and then like make you feel bad if you don't? Yeah, well, I succumbed to that because I was stupid and I bought this and I have not listened to it. It was only five bucks though, so like whatever. Then we have Issues, the Black Diamonds EP. I don't know why I don't own any other album by them because they're not like one of my favorite bands, but I know every song by them and they're all fucking good. What is the best one? I'm gonna say Princeton Avenue. And then we have Knuckle Puck. I have The Weight That You Buried, While I Stay Secluded. Did I get that right? Yes. Oh, that's signed. I forgot that was signed. Wow, okay. And then Shapeshifter. I still need Copacetic. I know that there's an EP that came out before this that I can't fuck. Don't Come Home. That's what it's called. But I know that that's kind of, that's like pretty rare because I didn't do too many CDs for that one. Anyways, Way That You Buried. What's the best one on here? Well, duh, no good. Well, I say secluded, 100%, but why would you care? If you are ever curious, that is half of what this tattoo is about. Just saying. And then for Shapeshifter, I think Want Me Around is my favorite for this one. Okay, I had a pause to eat a salad. So if there's any food on my face or my teeth, mind your business. Last 
of the case, we have corn. I'm going to admit I have clearly a lot of corn CDs. However, corn is one of those bands where like, I know a lot of their songs, but not enough for me to like be super into them. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, they're one of those bands where like, I can put their shit on shuffle and like fuck with everything, but I don't really know a lot of the lyrics or like can like differentiate songs from each other, but whatever. I mean, first album I can. I know a few albums, like the first three. We have corn self-titled. I have a shirt that I actually got from Goodwill that has this little cover on it or whatever. And at my old job, old men would just love to start a conversation with me about it just because I was wearing the fucking shirt. But anyways, okay, what's the best one on here? Do I be predictable and say shoots and ladders or do I do fake it? <laughs> I'm gonna do fake it. Then we have life is peachy, ass itch. <laughs> Why do I always choose like fucking ridiculous titles? Okay. We have Follow the Leader. Best one is Got the Life. My nose is like running. Issues. This one I, I had to be cliche and do Falling Away From Me. Mostly because like I said, I don't really know the rest of these songs that well. Okay, shut up. What's this one? Untouchables. This one I actually do have one. Where is it? Hating. Then we have Take a Look in the Mirror. Yeah, I'll be predictable. Y'all want a single. Then we have See You on the Other Side. This one I 100% know what my favorite song is because my favorite song of theirs in general is on this album. And that is Twisted Transistor. And then lastly, we have the Paradigm, Paragium, Par Parag, whatever the fuck. So, so, the something shift. <laughs> uh, my favorite is Pray For Me. Grab all of the L's right away. So we have Lady Gaga, the fame monster. Nobody's gonna judge me for, for this. It's Lady Gaga. Who would I be if I didn't listen to Lady Gaga? This was one of those albums where like, it came out when I was emo, but when I was hiding the fact that I actually like low-key liked some radio bops and like Lady Gaga was in that realm where I was like, I can't let anybody know that I like her, but I liked her. <laughs> there are so many good songs on this. <laughs> okay, so So Happy I Could Die is hella good. I so badly want to save Just Dance. <laughs> Actually, no, Love Game. It's it's Love Game, okay? You know, I just, I can't get over the nostalgia. Then we have Let Live, which Let Live is, well, was one of my favorite bands at one point. So we have Fake History. It's either going to be the 666.8 six, six billion or We the Pros of Khan or H Ledger. And then we have The Black is Beautiful, which as you can see, it is signed. I don't even remember when the fuck I got this signed, honestly. I think it might have been like a meet and greet. Anyway. Anyways, little backstory. I actually drew this like album cover for uh, an art project for school. I will put the drawing right here and as you can see it's signed because I drew it, I took a picture of it, I tweeted out to like the band's Twitter page and I was like hey if I bring this to the show because they were touring with like Taking Back Sunday and somebody else but anyways I was like if I take this with me will you sign it and then Jason messaged me from the Twitter account and was like yes absolutely so I was like okay cool I like rolled it up into a backpack I rolled it up into a ball shoved it in a backpack and then went to the show and then I spent the entirety of Taking Back Sunday's set waiting in the back by the merch table he finally came out and I was like I walked up to him and I was like hey Jason who's the singer did I say that whatever he finally came out and I was like hey like I was the the one who had messaged you on Twitter and like as I'm talking I'm like pulling out like the drawing or whatever that's like all like rolled up it was like his eyes like lit up when I unrolled it but as I was pulling it out it was like he completely recognized like he knew exactly like what I was talking about and what it was gonna be so you know that was really cool he was very excited about it he took a picture of it it's on his phone and yeah I'm gonna move on to Linkin Park okay we have hybrid theory a place for my head then we have reanimation which is basically just hybrid theory pimped the fuck out then we have meteora what is my favorite figure nine but do y'all remember numb slash encore that they did with jay-z i like recently remembered it like a few months ago and a revelation my life has been changed <laughs> then we have just the they're live in texas little dvd cd combo and then we have minutes to midnight what is my favorite on here honestly valentine's day it's a slow one but it makes my chest hurt and then we have the hunting party i think the summoning and last but not least for the l's lord pure heroin god i mean ribs butt cut season glory and gore white teeth teens actually no not white teeth teens i meant to say a world alone what no no I, I didn't run out of time yesterday and have to continue filming today <laughs> Not at all. Let's continue. Okay, so the next three I have are Man Overboard, Heart Attack. <laughs> I think, okay, White Lies still slaps, so I'm gonna go with that one. And then I have, is there self-titled? I think this is their self-titled. Which one's the best one on here? Oh, Punishment, 100%. And then we have Major League, Hard Feelings. I think Homewrecker was my favorite on this one. It's been a while, okay? All right, now let's get to another fat stack of CDs that I have. Ugh, okay, hi, this is all Marilyn Manson. 
let's just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anyways, yes. Yeah, so we have portrait of an American family. What's my favorite on here? Dope hat. Then we have lunchbox. Yeah, there's really not a lot on here. There's five songs and three are remixes. Two are the same. Not much to say about this one. Then we have smells like children, which if I remember correctly, this one's got. Yeah, this, this one has sweet dreams on it. And it has the n-word, which I didn't even- I forgot. <laughs> uh, that's a big yikes. Wait, which, you know, that reminds me. They- there was like a thing on Twitter. Somebody had a screenshot, a song that was apparently by like John Lennon and like Yoko Ono or the fuck her name was. And it was like, woman is another word for n-word or n-word is another word. Something like misogynistic and racist as fuck like that. And I'm just like, well, good thing I never fucking liked the Beatles or John Lennon because they both fucking suck dick and we don't support racism in this house because what the fuck was that? It's not fun. Anyways, let's stop talking about that piece of shit. Which one is this one? Antichrist, Superstar. What is my favorite on here? I need to see the songs, please. Thank you. You know, maybe I should look at these CDs because I'm not even gonna tell you what I'm seeing right now. Anyways, which one's my favorite? Um, probably either tourniquet or worm boy i'm probably gonna say worm boy then we have mechanical animals i'll be honest this is like actually no i'll tell you which one is my least favorite by him but this is like my second least favorite by him but it's fine you know where are the song names i don't have a good memory oh i don't like the drugs but the drugs like me and then we have hollywood right yes hollywood all right which one is my favorite the nobodies and then we have the golden age of grotesque which no, you need to learn to put your goddamn song names on the back of your fucking CDs. Thank you. Okay, it's either Kaboom Kaboom, Paranoir, or I hate saying this, but <laughs> Dollar Dag or Buzz Buzz, Ziggity Zag. <laughs> It's just catchy. Then we have Eat Me, Drink Me, which this is what I was talking about, which was, these two are like my least favorites by him. But anyways, yes, we have Eat Me, Drink Me. What songs are on here? Heart Shaped Glasses is my favorite. Then we have, yeah, The High End of Low. I really, it's not that I don't like any of these songs. It's just, I never, they don't hit the same way the other ones do. But I think Unkillable Monster. And then we have Born Villain. What's my favorite on here? Children of Cain. And then The Pale Emperor. I can't say this. The Meph, the Meph. Mephistopheles of Los Angeles. Ha, look at me, knowing words, knowing English. I'm gonna grab this. Okay, we have Mayday Parade, A Lesson in Romantics. I went to their 10 year anniversary tour for this album where they played it in full. And this is my favorite album by them. So like, thank you for that. And that being said, Ocean and Atlantic is my favorite off this one. Then we have Anywhere But Here. See, it's funny because like, I listened to Mayday Parade when I was probably like 14 to like 16, maybe. Maybe like 13 to like 16. But it's just funny like getting older because like, it's not that any of the songs are bad or that I don't like them anymore. It's just kind of like they're a band that I really grew out of because a lot of their songs are just really like corny. Like I, I guess I would, I guess I like resonated with them more when I was younger because you know like emo, sad, love, all that bullshit. And now I'm just kind of like I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think the silence is probably my favorite off that one. And then we have their self-titled and which was my favorite. On here. I think it's a shot across the bow if I remember correctly. Then we have Miss May I at heart. I like this CD because the little heart on the end side if I can here's all the hearts on the CD and if you like move it it like changes the heart all right and then we have one of my favorite albums of all time feel something by movements I like every song on this goddamn album fuck okay it's gotta be probably full circle suffer through and deep red and then the last of the ends my chemical romance so we have I brought you my bullets you brought me your love my favorite is probably probably drowning lessons or demolition lovers then we have uh, three cheers for sweet revenge my favorite on here 100% is thank you for the venom then we have life on the murder scene which is just live CD performances little documentary thing TV appearances online performances music videos etc and then we have the black parade favorite on here mama if mama is not your favorite song on that album honestly who are you and yes am i sweating just just a wee little bit oh that one's sweating a lot more <laughs> okay so yeah that is my cd collection from a to m whoo i hope you guys enjoyed this video part two is gonna be coming soon i don't know when i don't know how long i'm going to split these up i'm obviously going to film it right now right away but yeah i don't know how far apart these videos are going to be so i guess we'll just figure that out so if you like this video keep your eye out for that keep your eye out for any other videos that I post in the meantime. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.